Today, how to get yourself a smart trainer on a budget that is not a budget smart trainer. It's no secret the technology hardware industry survives on you buying off the shelf new on a very, very regular basis. And we see the same with smart trainers. Companies releasing new models almost on a yearly basis with updates, slight changes, modifications, new models. You can almost set your discontinued smartwatch to it. Yeah, that's an Apple Watch Series 3. Before smart trainers came along, we'd just have standard dumb trainers or fluid trainers, which would only cost us a few hundred dollars. And we'd definitely get that value out of them during their lifetime over a few years. So sitting them in the corner and watching them collect dust was never a problem. With smart trainers costing north of $1,000, plus or minus, it's not really wise to have something like that sitting in the corner collecting dust. So a lot of people will on sell when they go through the update or refresh process. Secondhand, pre-owned, used, call it what you will, but there's a gold mine of money to be saved or bargains to be had, whichever way you put it. Let's go through my recommendations of smart trainers that you can save a lot of money on. A few things to cover first before we dive into the trainers themselves. First up, the technology used. Ant Plus and Bluetooth Smart is supported by all smart trainers. There is a push towards Ant Plus FEC and Bluetooth FTMS, the fitness machine service protocol, but those standards are not mandatory and all software out there at the moment supports either or. So at the moment, nothing is obsolete in regard to a smart trainer. You'll never buy something that will not work. One factor that may turn people away from buying secondhand privately is the warranty. Now the warranty may only apply to the original owner, even if it's within that first 12 month period, do check with the company before purchase. And a few things to check before buying a pre-owned, secondhand or a used indoor smart trainer. So first of all, easy ones, visual inspection for wear. Has it had a hard life? Has it been sitting outside? Does it look pretty rough? Usually a good indicator. For direct drive smart trainers with a cassette, check the cassette for cleanliness, wear, and does it squeak or rattle around? Next up, the original receipt. Does the seller have the original receipt? Are they the original owner? If you can, turn the smart trainer on and connect to it via the company's app. You don't have to be a customer to download the Wahoo Fitness app, Tax app, Elite app, Cyclops app, etc. So you can use that to jump on, check the unit to see if it reads, see if it reports power, and to check the firmware updates. And finally, test ride the unit if you can, either on your bike or the seller's bike, just to make sure it does work. Okay, now onto the trainers themselves. The trainers I'll cover here have been superseded. They're no longer on the shelves, or the ones that are on the shelves are run out models because there's been something new. I will cover all three previous editions of the Wahoo Kicker Direct Drive Smart Trainer because there's just so many of those out there. So first up, the Wahoo Kicker Gen 1 Direct Drive Smart Trainer released 2014 has the same form factor as all Direct Drive Kickers. It really hasn't changed. It can be a little whiny or noisy at higher revs, so watch for that. The later firmwares on these kickers have uh, changed the power reporting from the strain gauge, had a little strain gauge thing you could hear ticking away in it, to model mode power reporting, which is the same as the Gen 2, 3, and 4. Uh, it, they come with 11 speed free hub, so you're all good there. For through axle support, you will need a quick release adapter converter, so they don't support native through axle. There's no kicker climb support, so if you're looking at buying the kicker climb, you need to steer clear of the Gen 1 and Gen 2 kickers. There are serviceable parts on kicker Gen 1s. You can replace the belt, the free hubs, the shims inside those. I personally have purchased three or four generation one kickers, refurbished them and on sold them, maybe for a little bit of margin. So there are bargains out there and these units work very, very well, still to this day. Just yesterday, I spotted a Wahoo kicker generation one for 750 Australian dollars, which is around 550 US, I think, give or take which had done under a thousand kilometers. That was an absolute bargain. That is less than half price of a Kicker 18 off the shelf and still $450 cheaper than a Kicker Core. That's near on the best deal you'll see if you can find a unit that is in good condition. Generation two of the Kicker, the Kicker 16, very similar to the Kicker one, but a slight reduction in noise and a handle and some status lights. Price wise, you'd be maybe paying probably $100 to $125 more on the second hand market. Still a good deal to have. On to generation three of the Kicker, the Kicker 17. It comes with native through axle support, so no adapters required. You can just take your through axle out of your bike, put it into the Kicker and away you go. And also pivoting rear drops. So it does support the Kicker climb if you're looking at upgrading to one of those in the near future. Look at those three, if noise isn't much of an issue and you're not going towards the Kicker climb, the Kicker Gen 1 is an absolute steal at around half the price retail of the Kicker 18. Uh, definitely my pick of the bunch for those trainers to choose from there, from Wahoo. Uh, if you can get a Kicker 17 from a really, really good price, probably jump on that, but I wouldn't pay any more than what a Core costs because a Kicker Core is effectively a Kicker 17 that's quiet. So watch for that. Watch for your prices, do the math, but shop around. 
Next up for wheel on trainers from Wahoo, the original kicker snap, superseded by the snap 17. We haven't seen a new one this year, so a slower release cycle for new units, but the original kicker snap, wheel on trainer, watch for the roller condition. If it's roughed up, it may chew through tires and uh, wear things prematurely. Regular spin downs are required for wheel on trainers to get accurate power. There can be a bit of drift if you're doing 400 watts erg mode for extended periods of time. If you're using an on-bike power meter, that's not a problem at all. Technically, there's no climb support for the original snap and through axle adapters are required if needed. So if you have an on-bike power meter, you can pick one of these up nice and cheap. You get yourself a pretty good bargain there. Onto the Cyclops offering, the Cyclops Hammer has recently been superseded by the Hammer H2. Um, it's the They Built a Kicker trainer from Cyclops. Rock solid build, later firmwares addressed problems with overheating on longer climbs, and it does come with native through axle support. Onto the Cyclops Magnus wheel on trainer from Cyclops, superseded by the M2. Uh, the flywheel on that unit's a little light. The ride feel on it is a little bit um, labored, I guess, but it packs a mega punch when it comes to hills and erg mode. So again, if you can pick yourself up a bargain compared to recommended retail, jump on one of those, you won't be disappointed. Onto the Elite Drevo. Yes, this has been superseded by the Dark Knight version, the Drevo 2. If you can find them pre-owned, I don't think I've ever seen a pre-owned Drevo, but you will get very, very good power accuracy with the OTS, the optical torque sensor on these units. The later models have firmware version 5.0, which improves erg mode performance. We haven't seen a firmware update app or ability from Elite. Hopefully we'll see one of those soon. So if you have an earlier model Drevo, you can update and get that as extra features. Early editions were also Ant Plus or Bluetooth. It depended which one you connected to first. It supports both, but the one you connect to on startup was the one it locked in and it disconnected the other. So it was kind of weird. Again, new firmware updates fixed those. They do have native through axle support. So make sure the adapters come in the box if you're buying secondhand. Over to Tax and the Tax Neo. Whoa, yes, the Tax Neo has been superseded by the Tax Neo 2. So you will see these on run out. You will see these secondhand for people who want to upgrade to the newer versions. So the Tax Neo, it's quiet, it's accurate. There's no assembly required. Through axle adapter is required to convert it over. It comes with a little quick release adapter thing, but it's the same with the Neo 2, so you're not missing out on anything there. The ride feel has a few little quirks, as discussed in my review. I'll link below to that of the original Neo unit. There are two models of the Neo 1. The second model had a slight revision to the casing. So watch for that. I definitely recommend putting your bike on the trainer first to make sure it's compatible and away you go. And finally, onto the wheel on trainers from Tax, which we see quite a few of on the second hand market. The Vortex, the Bushudo, and the Flow. Same with anything. Check for the roller condition, turn the unit on, make sure it works, have a listen, make sure there's no squeaks, and away you go. You can get yourself a pretty good bargain that's compatible with any app that's out there today. So about now, you're probably asking yourself, where do you find one of these quality smart trainers on a budget? Well, my top four tips for that. Number one, friends, family, cycling groups, triathlon groups, multi-sport groups online. Look local first, maybe look to your local capital city, state, and then national. If you can buy local, it's always easy to drop around and try them as uh, recommended before with all those other tips. Secondly, Facebook, buy, swap, sell groups is where you might be able to find those local groups. Thirdly, websites, Craigslist, Gumtree here in Australia, but beware of those because murderers. And lastly, eBay, but I'd use eBay as a last resort because uh, you're bidding against other people. It's much easier to lowball someone else from those other top three first and get yourself a bargain that way. Okay, onto the disclaimers, warnings, and things to be aware of with these. As mentioned, warranty, do check warranty if it will apply to you or not. That may depend on the country and local consumer laws from where you are at. Check to see if the seller has all the original components, the power supplies, the adapters. If they have the original box, that's good for shipping. It's also a good sign to look after their gear. If you're unsure about the compatibility and what training you're looking at buying, drop into your local bike store with your bike and have a chat to the team there. They may know of one going cheap for second hand. Someone may have just come in and bought a new trainer is trying to offload one, or they may be able to do you a bargain on something new. If you're still unsure about which trainer that you want to go with, jump on YouTube and do some research. I've done videos on all the trainers that I've spoken about here today. So jump on, search away, and have a look what's for you. And once you've saved a ton of money, you have your new smart trainer, which trainer app to go with? Well, that's entirely up to you. Jump online, download the demo versions or the trial versions of everything, give it a whirl and pick which one you like the best. So there we are, my tips on finding a smart trainer on a budget, but not a budget smart trainer. Whether you're getting into smart training for the first time, whether you're buying a second one for your wife, your partner, your kids, there's a lot of money to be saved. And hopefully those tips have helped you out. Remember, hit subscribe below to support this channel and what I'm up to, and we'll be back with more soon.